Welcome to the final wrap up of your weekly weigh in. I'm your host, Skylar Spindler, along with Coach Carrie Colott, our coaching staff, and Nathan Kreiser. Coach, let's talk about the hiring staff we, we started with and, and where you've taken it this year. Yeah, I, I think we had a, a great season, you know, this year, and, and much of that is due to um, who we brought on staff this year. I was able to hire Scotty Sintez out, out of Cal Poly. I was able to pull uh, Garrett Kiley out of Iowa State, and then Evan Henderson, who's not here today, but he followed down from uh, UNC. And, and when you put a team together, all the things that we did this year, it, you know, you, you don't want to be a, a head coach who micromanages. And, and so what I was able to do this year is allowed to give these guys select guys on the team and, and certain job duties and, and allowed us to be uh, more efficient and, and more functional. And, and uh, we definitely wouldn't be sitting here had I not brought these guys on board this year. And, and um, it really took some, some stress off of me and, and um, it allowed us to focus on the guys more individually. So as we recap on the season, let's go back to homecoming. The kickoff is really important to us. It's really important to Campbell. We, it was the second year we had done it. We had, uh, following that, we had a dinner that we, we, we uh, put on and it was probably about 200 to 250 people that attended in Carter Gym. And, and it's great because when you're building a program and, and getting it going in the right direction, you want to, as much support as possible from the administration through, and also through your alumni. And, and I think they had a great time. You know, they, they shared memories here. And Campbell's changed a lot from the time they were here with the arenas we have now. And, um, but they really appreciated being brought back. And, and I know our guys appreciated um, the dinner and, and the guys on the team currently and seeing the support we had. And, and they stuck with us through the whole season. Nathan, you are Campbell's first participant in the All-Star Classic. It was a really neat experience as I kicked off my season that way. Um, didn't count towards my record, but it was uh, it was awesome to kind of get Campbell recognized uh, in that. I was we had a dual dual meet the next day, but um, I wanted to do it for Campbell, like do it for the team, kind of get our attention out there. And it was it was a great experience. I'm glad I did it. Got to go to Cleveland and got a bunch of cool gear and um, won my match, so that was always good too. And kind of got my name out there. You were also a part of uh, the Navy Classic and a few other matches. How did you feel that you performed in those? Um, I felt I performed really well. Um, a lot at the Navy and other dual meets and stuff like that. The whole team did well. We all kind of fed off each other's energy. If uh, the other guys weren't doing as well, I wouldn't have done as well, I feel. Um, everyone was winning in matches and we kind of picked ourselves up and that gave me confidence going into the end of the year and throughout the season. Nathan Kreiser placed seventh at the Southern Scuffle, and you had four others that went on to the second day. You want to talk to us a little more about how that went? Yeah, so the Southern Scuffle uh, is probably the second toughest tournament behind the NCAA tournament. It's kind of your best, best gauge of where you're at in the middle of the year. It's about right at the halfway point. So there's a ton of teams there, huge brackets, tons of nationally ranked guys in every weight class. So if you can make a deep run in that tournament, it kind of shows you where you stack up in the country. Um, so Nathan ended up finishing in seventh place, made a, made a good run, lost two tight matches, and uh, actually in the seventh and eighth place match, he beat another top ten nationally ranked opponent, the same guy he beat in the All-Star Classic. So it was good to pick up a second win over him. We also had four other guys reach the second day. They were all within one win of um, placing in the top eight, so they made it to the top 12. Um, Nathan Boston competing unattached, Andrew Morgan unattached, um, Vile Hino and Austin Kreiser, Nathan's brother, also made it to the second day. So it was a good performance for our team. Um, and a lot of the guys made a deep run, made a good showing. I think I think was probably what we saw come out of the Southern Scuffle as well. Jerry Hino probably had his, his worst tournament of the season there. He was flat, he was he was out early, and you could tell that it, it definitely fired him up. It, it, he, he really re-motivated himself when he got back to campus and with training. I think at that point he he'd only had two losses, um, you know, going into the the Southern um, going into our SoCon championships. He lost to Tanner Hall, was ranked fourth at the time. Um, we dropped another close one to someone else, but that tournament is important for us to see deep runs and see where we're at nationally. But it's also it's good in other aspects too, where we see guys that you know say, okay, I, I've got more work to do and I've got to put in some extra time. And Jerry definitely changed from the time he got back from the Southern Scuffle. One of the biggest highlights of the season was beating Chattanooga, and it was historic for Campbell because it was our first time. So let's just tell us a little bit more about how that event went. Yeah, it definitely had a, a lot of highs and a, a lot of lows. You know, we started off a little bit flat. Um, you know, we lost down low where we were expecting to win, and, and, and towards the top of the, the dual meet, 
um, our big guys really stepped up. They had some ranked guys. Uh, heavyweight uh, is where it actually came down to, um, where he had a top 10 guy, and he had to win that match to, to win the dual meet. And, and Jerry stepped up big time for us and, and got it done. And uh, seeing how that dual meet went, you could, you could tell the guys kind of started making the shift and, and really started believing themselves, uh, you know, heading into the, the last part of the season. Let's talk about two people that couldn't make it here today, Coach Evan Henderson and Anthony Cox. Yeah, um, uh, Coach Henderson is our, our volunteer on staff. He was, uh, I coached Evan when I was at UNC and, and now he's here training, trying to make an Olympic and a world team and he's on staff as the volunteer. Um, he's had a good run this year in, in freestyle. He's still kind of, you know, green to the international style of wrestling, but he's currently ranked sixth in the United States at his weight, weight class. He took second at the Dave Schultz. And uh, I think what was great about that, that weekend that all that happened for him, um, we inducted Anthony Cox, our first wrestler, into the um, Hall of Fame here at Campbell. And, and Anthony has been a big supporter of our program, and, and he ties us to a lot of the other alumni that, that are part of the program. He actually competed in our orange and black, and, it, and we had him and a, a few other alumni I come back and wrestle that day, so it was pretty funny to see him get tired on the mat. Um, but I know Anthony was really proud. His family was really proud. We had probably two other two other uh, of his class come down and speak on his behalf at the induction. Um, so I was really happy that those two things happened in, in that weekend. So it was it was just a continue of, of what's going on here at Campbell with our program and a lot of first things happening for the first time. Well, speaking of induction, you were inducted into the Wrestling Hall of Fame. I got in, uh, nominated and inducted this year in, in, uh, in June. The first weekend of June, I'll travel down with my family and, and, and some friends, and, and uh, I'll spend three days at Stillwater at the Hall of Fame, and during that process, we'll have a dinner, and I'll be inducted, and, and um, they have a golf outing, although I don't golf, but I'll be there in, in attendance. But, yeah, it's a big accomplishment. It, it, it kind of, you know, stamps your name in the, in the history books of, with wrestling. You don't think about it when you're competing as you get older. You now look back, and someday my kids will go back and meet my grandkids and see my plaque in there and it'll be pretty cool I guess. Let's talk about the highlights of the team from SOCON. Yeah it was um, it was big it was big for our school it was big for administrators it was, it was great for our team I and mean, we won our first SOCON title and, and um, you know when the year started I wasn't sure exactly where we were at we, we're made up of a lot of young guys and um, we had we had some uh, some young guys in the lineup in the middle and and we always said freshmen tend to peak or, or turn the corner if they're going to make it they're going to make it by January February and you'll see them start to change and um, we saw them change in February, and, and at that point, we felt really good about going into the SoCon Championships and being able to walk out of there as, as a team champion. So it, it wasn't something that we thought we couldn't do, and it wasn't luck. It was, we're looking good. And, and what happened during that, that event was I felt like the, the night before we had our team meeting, I felt the guys, they, they felt relaxed. You could sense it. Um, but really what kicked it off is the first day we went 10-0 and 0 in the first round. Every single guy that had about one. Um, so that allowed us to put, you know, when we were all said and done, we wound up putting um, 10 guys into the semifinal, and, and, and then we were able to put six guys into the finals of the event. Um, and again, I come back to our freshman, Josh Heil, you know, at that point, he had a rocky season at the beginning, and then as the season went on, he made some, some adjustments mentally, how he approached the sport, and, and uh, you saw it, he, he became more relaxed, and, and he went undefeated in the conference and duels, and, and um, had a great, was probably one of the best tournaments I saw him wrestle. It was the best tournament I saw him wrestle uh, all year in terms of how he approached each match, and, and came out uh, as a SOCON champion as a freshman and qualified himself for nationals. And then Quentin Perez hit some techniques that we, we've always seen him train and drill in the practice room, and, and you could see he was relaxed because things were coming out that we hadn't seen all year, and, and uh, that allowed him to put himself in the finals against a tough opponent in the semis, and he looked great in the finals as well, very relaxed, uh, probably more relaxed than any of the coaching staff was, and, and so those guys did an excellent job, but as a team, we got it rolling early, and, and we just kept on going. You earned SOCON Coach of the Year. Did you anticipate going in there and winning this award? Uh, well, the SOCON Coach of the Year is picked by other SOCON coaches, and, and uh, I think we all have a mutual respect for each other. So, I mean, considering from where the program was when I got here and, and, and in three years we had won the team title, and, and um, so I, I wasn't too shocked, but it's still, you know, having your peers vote for you as the Coach of the Year is, is a, a big accomplishment, and I'm really grateful for those guys. Uh, and, you know, we have a mutual respect for each other, and we know how hard the job is. Nathan, you became Campbell's first All-American, placing eighth at Nationals. Was that an emotional experience for you? Yeah, it was... Um it was like a big relief, I'd say a big weight off my chest. Uh, it was a senior year, last chance to do it. I'd been out to nationals four times before, and it was a lot of, when I was out there, I just tried to have fun and wrestle, not put too much stress on myself. Then after I won that match to All-American, you see a lot of people 
jumping up and down, hugging the coaches. For me, it was just like a big sigh of relief. Just like finally, finally got onto the podium. Coach Sentes, you do a lot of hands-on training with Nathan. How is it coaching him and getting him to the podium? Well, you know, Nathan's always been capable. Um, we knew that when I first got here. Uh, it didn't really do a lot to fix him. I was just kind of there, you know, as a training partner and, and to make sure he gets his warm-ups in right, things like that. Um, when we got to the tournament, we got the brackets, and we had the number one seed, uh, second round of the tournament. Uh, so we know we had our, 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 you know, the fight had to be there. Um, and in that match, I, I thought the fight was there, and, and that's when I knew, you know, Nathan, Nathan was going to find his way on the stand, uh, and he had to go through an opponent who had beaten him earlier in the year, um, and, and that was the Stanford kid. And, and, and then it came down to the, the round of 12 where we had another opponent who had beaten us in the Southern Conference and beaten us in, in the duel throughout the year, um, and, and we ended up beating him, Freddie Rodriguez, who was uh, one person that me and, and Coach Colette had talked about that we didn't want to see. Uh, so it was kind of cool that it came down to that guy who, who we knew just stylistically was going to be a tough match, and Nathan was able to grit it out and, 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 and you know, overcome that and, and get himself uh, All-American honors. So, so for me, it was a, a proud moment, you know, being able to see him kind of accomplish his goals um, and just be in there through it, right, because it's hard to bounce back from, from a loss and then beat two guys who you lost to. So it was, it was a pretty special moment for me. He's my first All-American ever, so it was, it was pretty exciting. How did you feel about the other four qualifiers that competed? You know, I, I thought we wrestled tough. Another one would be uh, Jerry Hino, who made the round of 16. Um, he has the third most uh, wins at the NCAA tournament in Campbell history. Uh, he, he was pretty exciting. I know he, he beat two uh, ranked opponents in route of making the round of 16 um, before he, he fell. But, uh, you know, I thought he had a really tough tournament. Um, you know, the, the other two guys, uh, you know, it was good for them to get there. Um, you know, Quentin Perez is his first time ever at the national tournament. Uh, so for him, that's going to be a really good experience going on in the future. And, and then obviously, uh, Vile, you know, Vile, that he's been there before. He, he didn't quite accomplish his goals there. But, um, you know, he's going to be going back to Finland, and, and I'm sure it was a good experience for him as well. Campbell finished 16th in the mid-majors and overall 38. Quite an accomplishment for us. Yeah, it was good. Uh, kind of shows you where you're at. The mid-major polls. Uh, basically, it's removing the Power Five conference schools, uh, schools that are full-time members of the Power Five. Um, and then 38th overall, so that's adding all the Power Five schools back in is where we finished, it, finished at Nationals, um, which is a big jump from previously and a, and a really big jump from where the program was a, a few years ago. And speaking of Nationals, we sent five national qualifiers to St. Louis. Um, the year prior, we only had two so what, what kind of impact does that have on the team going forward? Yeah, it's a big impact on the team going forward, um, not only on the current guys. I think in program history there have been 12 national qualifiers, and we've never sent more than two in a season. So sending five in one year is, is a big deal. It's a big jump forward for the program, uh, and most importantly probably for recruiting. It just kind of shows recruits, hey, you can come here, you can get to nationals, and you can win. You can be an All-American and, and climb higher on the podium. Um, just kind of shows this is a place you can do that. How many do we have returning for next season? So we have eight out of our 10 starters are returning next year. So eight of our 10 starters were freshmen and sophomores this year. We're just losing two seniors, Nathan and uh, Vile. So the future's bright in terms of our lineup. We had a lot of people um, with a couple of really good guys redshirting this year. They're, they're chomping at the bit to get in the lineup. And we're also bringing in some nationally ranked recruit, four-time state champions, all kinds of really high-quality kids who are going to be looking to to break into that lineup and just keep pushing us higher. Campbell has had an unbelievable season. We've sent five guys to the Nationals. We won SOCON. What is next for the program? Um, I think next when we got back, everybody was really excited. I, uh, I think the next big thing that we're on is, is to start to move forward on a new wrestling complex here on campus. Um, you know, we've got you know some great guys looking at our program, great recruits checking the program out. And, and I think it's the next step. I mean, you know, as we say, we're all in. I think what I'm most excited about is, is the recruits that are coming in um, and, and how they're going to stand up with our guys currently here. I mean, now we're kind of a championship team, and I think the ex expectations are only going to be risen, and these guys get to kind of come into that new culture. Uh, so I'm excited to see where that takes us. It was nice uh, for our staff. We took a day off and got right back to work, and we're just excited for the next season and seeing where, where this takes us and how high we can climb. That wraps up this year's weekly weigh-in. Thank you for your support, and for more highlights, you can go to GoCamels.com. I'm Skylar Spindler. We'll see you next year.